Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Lego Train Automated Container Terminal. Uh, the previous episode was about uh, moving containers and I was using this compressor for the compressed air and turned out that it didn't exactly work like it should. Uh, the problem was that it didn't go beyond 37 psi while normally it would go to 45 psi, shut down, uh, wait until the pressure drops until 40 psi and then come back, up, come back online again. So it keeps uh, the pressure between these two values. Um, so I've been digging, I've been checking connections, I've been removing uh, the buffer tanks and stuff like that. That wasn't the problem. Uh, then the only thing left that could be a problem were the pumps itself. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. So what I basically did was that here is a pressure sensor, I connected it with a uh, extension line directly onto one pump and um, so the whole program is now just responding on this pump here only so there's no uh, buffer vessel in between so the pressure ramps up pretty quickly so let's have a look so what you basically see I don't know if it's visible or not here it is 37 it doesn't come beyond that so that means there's a leakage in this pump here so let's try let's try the second pump look at that you see this pump works works this correctly. Now, I've been looking around and it turns out that on this side only, on this side, excuse me, on this side, three pumps are not reaching the 42 PSI. So that means that only this pump that is connected right now is good and the other three are leaking. And that's a big issue. Because uh, I need at least 40, 42 psi, something like that, for the big red crane uh, with the scissor lift system on it. It, it requires a certain amount of uh, air pressure and if it doesn't reach it, it doesn't lift the container high enough. So um, this is a problem. The problem is that I cannot fix it. The problem is the pump itself. I'm asking too much of a pump. So is there a solution for this? Uh, yes there is, there are two solutions, because when I was looking at BrickLink, so let's have a look at BrickLink. So I'm here in BrickLink, uh, we're going to have a look at the pump that I was talking about, where is it, pneumatic systems, alright, then there is this pump that you see here. This is the one that I have been using until now. This one appears in two sets, 2015 and 16. But if you look closely, you see that there's another pump here. Pneumatics pump small, V2 with reinforced cylinder. Look at that. <laughs> and that one is used in a 2021 set and a 2018 set so that pump should be better a reinforced cylinder, reinforced cylinder actually also gives an explanation for the problems that i have maybe they found out their set themselves at lego that there's a problem with it when uh, when it's used for a certain amount of time so that could be an option that we can use this new pump with reinforced cylinder uh, let's have a look at the costs yeah seven euros i'm not gonna buy in china um, i need eight of them so use a high shipping costs no yeah about around here so eight pumps from germany with uh eight somewhat euros a piece that will be around 68 euros. That's a lot of money. You get a, a nice Lego set for that instead of eight pumps. 
So one way to solve the problem is, is to invest 80 euros, something like that, for new pumps. Because um, if I'm gonna do that, I wanna change all pumps. Because the problem is, I, I, I don't wanna li leave in uh, pumps that are fine now, but uh, stop working or start leaking uh, within a month or two months or so. Then I'm, I'm just surfacing this compressor all the time. Um, but it's a big guess, of course, because you don't know if these new version 2 pumps are better. Though it is described as a, uh, another cylinder is inside, uh, which suggests that they should work better, should be uh, more stable. Um, the second solution is these kind of pumps that you see here. Now, these kind of pumps are hand pumps but you can connect, it, connect them also to a motor. Um, there's a bit of a downside for that, and that is, am I in focus or not? Yeah. Um, the downside is that you need to glue them. This is glued, I used them in a different system, I don't know, uh, five, six years ago. You need to glue them, otherwise they're just tearing the whole thing apart. Um, that's a problem, not a real problem, but I'm, I'm not a fan of glue, but if I, must use it in certain cases like this. I will do that. Um, the other downside of these things is that they tend to give a signal on the power supply and that's because I need... Um, well, I tried it with XL motors. Maybe these L motors will uh, drive them good as well, but I definitely know XL motors do. And what it basically does is that it needs a lot of power, electrical power, to push it inside and then uh, almost not, no power to get them off again because there's also a spring in here. You know, so uh, th the problem is that the motors are getting a behavior that is like hoo, 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 hoo. Uh, that sounded a bit weird but <laughs> you get the point. And by doing so there's continuously when it's going down like that there's a pulse of a high current to the motor and when it goes back up again that current um, doesn't have to be that high but the problem is that the coils inside the motor at that point are charged with the high current and they're releasing it when it's going up again something like that so the problem is that they give a signal on the uh, on the, on the power line of, of the motors and that signal is actually visible in the whole system that is powered by the same power supply so i think i can filter it out with a huge capacitor or something like that but still it's um i don't know it's a long way to go so i have these things laying around like like three four five of these things so i can build a system and test it but uh, the problem is that also with these things there's a new version available on Bricklink which came out pop, 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 2021 so it's in the new um, tow truck the new tow truck uh, Technic set and um, that's a bit of a challenge but those pumps are available the new the new ones are available on Bricklink for the same price more or less than these pumps but then I still need to buy eight of those pumps because I can try these but since they have a new one they probably have improved it as well um, this is not on the new one this is uh, this this square block 2x2 two two is um, replaced by uh, by a lift arm with three holes in it um, but I need to rebuild the whole system so I need to buy new pumps Less pumps, of course, because these pumps are, uh, well, maybe they deliver twice the amount of air than the, uh, the small ones. So um, it, the option is cheaper, but uh, you get a system that is less stable. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what to do right now. I'm, I'm a bit in a doubt if I should buy eight new pumps or try first these pumps and then... Uh, then see how it all works because the problem is that I cannot fit these pumps inside here so I need to I don't know copy this system clone this system 
Oh wait, I see that there's a battery connector or, or a motor connectors here. So I can use the electronics from this system and have a system next to that with these pumps. Yeah, that should be it. I'm gonna do that first. See how this system behaves with uh, the L motors and see how much power, how much air we can get out of them and see how long it takes before I uh, yeah, destroy these pumps as well. So let's have a look. All right, I built a setup to test these hand pumps here. Uh, two L motors which came from uh, the system here and I connected the main hose to a temporary system here with the pressure transmitter and also the uh, buffer vessels attached to the whole system so we can see a bit how much air it is producing since this system it took a while to get to uh, 40 psi for example so we can have a bit of an idea of how much these pumps are delivering because I don't know so um, I'm gonna move it a bit like this so you can see the big red display giving the uh, actual number the actual pressure number let's enable it 19 it's moving up fast now faster than the other one that's for sure oh oh boy <laughs> that's not good <laughs> okay um <laughs> That is probably why I used XL motors instead of L motors. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a look if I have rain around a few XL motors. And uh, let's try again then. Alright, second try with two big fat XL motors. Let's see. If we can surpass the 37 PSI. Oh boy. Nah. All right. Um, did, that actually went better than I expected. What you actually saw was that it was dipping a bit because the first part is doing 12 volts and then it's going to 9 volts later on to uh, prevent wear out of the motors I'm gonna change that in the program make sure it stays on 12 volt because when I leave them on 9 volts they're not turning that fast so not a lot of air is produced but eventually it did turn out pretty well so uh, let's let's see one more time I'm gonna leave some air out So now you can hear it's at uh, 12 volts and at 35 it goes to 9 volts. There we go. I think it runs a bit smoother on 12 volts. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna change that in the software and then um, I'm gonna use this system, this temporary system for now to see if it actually works fine also after, I don't know, one month of using it. So I'm gonna leave this one intact for now, the, uh, the old compressor and the new compressor uh, I, can, uh, I can use now uh, as a temporary solution. All right, that was it for today. We found ourselves a new compressor a system for now and um, we don't have to spend uh, 80 euros on, on new pumps so uh, let's find out if this actually will work or not so in the next episode we're gonna have a look at the crane moving in uh, several directions so uh, hope to see you then bye